What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gull Pony. And today, we are in the new 2020 Audi Q5, courtesy of Sun Motor Cars in Mechanicsburg, PA. And so yes, they actually just recently got a brand new dealership. It's beautiful, but nonetheless, it's been quite a while since I've actually reviewed the Q5, so I figured I'd jump back into it today. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be a few different trim levels for the 2020 Q5. First one being the premium starting at $43,300. Then you have the premium plus starting at $47,700. And lastly, the prestige starting at $51,450. And so regardless of trim level that you go with though, power plant is going to be the same. Powering this one is going to be a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine, putting out 248 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, 273 pound feet of torque available at 16 1500 RPM. That power then being sent to all four wheels through Audi's legendary Quattro all-wheel drive system. Power sent to the ground through a seven-speed dual clutch with paddle shifters, which you guys know we will of course be testing out in a little bit here. But all in all, that gives you a zero to 60 time at 5.9 seconds, which is quite quick for an SUV. And we'll test that out as well. Top speed, if you're interested, comes in at 130 miles per hour, electronically limited, of course. And MPG numbers come in at 22 in the city, 27 on the highway, taking premium unleaded fuel. And so before we do any kind of accelerations in this thing, I did want to mention there are some drive modes. Of course, Audi Drive Select is what it's called. That button is located kind of just below the climate control settings there, but that is going to give you options like off-road comfort auto dynamic and individual and to sum that up dynamic is the fun one comfort is the better ride quality and individual you can really set it to your own liking but essentially what those drive modes will do is adjust things like the throttle response shift points and steering sensitivity and so if I were to put it down into that dynamic driving mode it does immediately downshift it will hold the rpms at a much higher level giving you more power on demand and it will also tighten up the steering sensitivity I would say every Ever so slightly not a whole lot of difference there as far as steering sensitivity goes but we'll say wouldn't have minded a little heavier weight as far as dynamic driving mode goes at least but it is pretty much as expected for an SUV as far as that goes but Having said all that, I think you guys know what we have to do next. And I did want to mention, if you wanted to put it in full manual shift mode, simply slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the right. That is going to give you full control over the shifting. And now having done that, let's do a quick little turning radius check here. Wow, that's excellent. I do a lot of turns right here, you guys. This is among the best. This turning radius is brilliant. Good job, Audi. <laughs> Anyways, I did just have it up around the 4,000 RPM range. It did not shift for me, so that's kind of the first test. It is truly a manual shift mode, which is brilliant. A lot of times vehicles will send it back into that drive mode if you don't touch it, but I do like the full control that I'm getting right now. But nonetheless, let's do a quick little paddle shift test here and let's see how quickly they're gonna react for us here. And here we go. Yes. Oh yeah lightning quick instantaneous that is one thing i feel like every time i drive an audi their paddle shifters are among the best i swear it's instantaneous reaction times if only maybe they were magnesium paddle shifters that would make it even cooler but they are plastic but still the reaction times on these paddle shifters are absolutely ridiculous instantaneous if you wanted to put it in that manual shift mode you will not be disappointed for sure but so now having done that you guys i think you know what we have to do next let's now do a quick little acceleration test here and let's see how quickly the q5 can actually get us here up to speed here we go oh my goodness <laughs> wow okay for an SUV, this thing is ridiculously quick, quite honestly. Zero to 60 and 5.9. You're not going to need anything faster than that in an SUV, to be quite honest. Merging onto the highway is going to be a breeze with that kind of acceleration. So plenty of power for the Q5. Certainly not disappointed there either. But as always, to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.3 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, it's been perfectly fine for me in my short test drive today. So definitely no issues there. Touching on suspension and handling a little bit, you will find a five link front and rear suspension. As far as steering feel goes, I kind of already touched on that. It is a 
little more on the loosey-goosey side, but it is pretty much as expected for an SUV. Although I will say in that dynamic mode, Audi, if you're watching this, wouldn't have minded a little bit heavier of a steering feel to that mode at least. Maybe not the others, but at least the dynamic mode. As far as ride quality goes, that has been brilliant. Really no issues there whatsoever. Definitely soaking up PA's road imperfections quite nicely. Cabin noise also very nice. And touching on visibility, I can see honestly perfectly fine out the back. Those second row headrests are kind of pushed to the side a good bit, so really you're not going to have any issues there. Sometimes they can cause problems, but definitely not in the Q5. And to go along with that touching on visibility, head-up display is going to come standard with the Prestige trim level. So if you wanted that head-up display, that's how you're going to go about getting that one. And rain sensing windshield wipers are also going to come standard on every single trim level. So rain sensing windshield wipers are definitely one of those things that should be standard on all cars these days. They're kind of like automatic headlights. It's just one last thing you have to worry about. So essentially the second the Q5 detects any kind of mist or rainfall, the windshield wipers will turn on automatically for you so you never have to worry about it. So you can better focus on driving the Q5. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this beautiful Audi Q5. All right, you guys, here she is, the 2020 Audi Q5. Let's go ahead and start up front on this nice cold winter day here. Audi single frame front grille, of course, will come standard along with that quattro lettering within that front grille, indicating one of the best all-wheel drive systems out there right now. It's always a plus. Xenon Plus headlights will come standard with the premium trim level. However, if you were to go with the premium plus or prestige, you will find full LED lighting up there. And all trims, though, we're still going to give you LED daytime running lights up there as well. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the side on this one. Aluminum roof rails will come standard on every single trim level that of course is what you are looking at right now aluminum trim window surrounds also coming standard rear privacy glass standard once again there are going to be some revised 18 inch alloy wheels one of the new upgrades for 2020 and that is going to be with the premium trim level and it's going to be a five spoke design up there however if you were to go with the premium plus or prestige you will find 19 inch alloy wheels and that of course is what you're looking at right now but so now let's take a quick look at those side mirrors there they are power adjustable heated side mirrors with integrated turn signals all of that coming standard for all trim levels there across the board and they are actually auto dimming with memory settings if you were to go with the premium plus trim level and up then making your way to the back first thing i always mention is there is that shark fin antenna up top there just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light rear window wiper of course just below that LED taillights, again, coming standard across the board. That's always nice. And just below it all, dual exhaust outlets. However, you would think they would be integrated into that rear bumper, but that is actually, my friends, an illusion because the real exhaust outlets you guys can see are found underneath, tucked away. But nonetheless, I think you guys all know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, and so now since we are already around back, as far as opening that rear lift gate goes, there is a power tailgate for all trim levels actually across the board. So that is definitely quite nice. Hands free tailgate is gonna come with the premium plus trim level and prestige. And there of course are several ways to go about opening that rear lift gate. There is a button on the key fob, also a button found on the driver's side door. And again, hands free if you were to go with the premium plus or prestige trim levels. But once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna come in at 25.1 one cubic feet if that was not enough space for you however there is a 40 20 40 split essentially meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space bumping the cubic feetness yes i know it's not a word up to 53.1 cubic feet and there's actually a good bit going on back there there's a spare tire just underneath of the cargo floor there there's actually led lighting in the cargo area and it's a cool design for the led lighting it's like a horizontal bar for the led lighting that was pretty cool 12 volt power outlet back there there is a rear cargo cover also a plus all in all definitely a nice setup to the cargo area making your way up to the rear leg room that comes in at 37.8 inches so for reference i mean even six feet tall definitely plenty of space for me back there and I did want to mention at this point, there is three zone climate control, meaning both driver and passenger have their own settings, but rear passengers can actually set their own temperature as well. So that's the third zone, of course, but also for those rear passengers,
passengers rear center armrest with cup holders of course will come standard and i did want to mention there are some rear window sunshades available although they do not come standard for the q5 but then making your way to the front seats leather seating is going to come standard across the board eight-way power adjustable heated front seats will come standard for all trim levels and that's not just the driver's seat by the way that's the passenger seat as well it usually doesn't work that way but that's pretty cool that audi did that memory settings can be found for the premium plus and prestige trim levels and they can be found in the driver's side door for up to two different drivers and there's actually several different color options for the interior as well which i found pretty cool of course you have black which you're looking at right now but there is also gray beige and a darker brown so that's pretty cool as well usually you just get the gray and the black so it's nice that you got two extra color options with the q5 but if you're curious ventilated front seats are available as an option again they don't come standard though they take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is power adjustable for the prestige trim level only and it will come leather wrapped for all trim levels across the board then when it comes to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have a kind of a heavier duty key but all the buttons are located on the one side you have your audi insignia at the very bottom lock unlock and again that button to pop the power rear lift gate but it is actually all keyless entry though so essentially all you need to do is just leave the key in your pocket put your foot on the brake and press that engine start button to go about starting this one up here and so perhaps the main question i always get in my audi reviews is which trim levels get the audi digital cockpit because it is one of the coolest things out there of course Audi Virtual Cockpit being a 12.3 inch LCD digital gauge cluster is going to come with the Premium Plus trim level and up. And so therefore we do have the Premium Plus so we do have it today. But all in all to control what is on that digital screen there are buttons on the left side of the steering wheel there and that really gives you a ton of different information. Tachometer being on the left speedometer on your right and there is a digital speedometer within the regular standard speedometer of course. How many miles you have left until you hit empty you can check out your driving modes up there average miles per gallon safety features radio information bluetooth information and of course perhaps the best part the navigation system and that's the best part because if you hit the view button after you select the navigation system you have a full digital navigation system up there with the speedometer and tachometer being much smaller in the bottom corners that is the best view in my opinion. I always love that Audi did that. It's still one of the coolest digital gauge setups out there right now. And Audi was one of the pioneers that first really, I believe, perfected this digital gauge setup. So it's still absolutely amazing up there. That's definitely one of my favorite parts about the Q5. But moving on to overall interior quality, panoramic moonroof coming standard with a premium plus and prestige and when i say panoramic moonroof this moonroof perhaps goes back the furthest i have ever seen as far as panoramic moonroofs go so that is quite impressive i gotta say walnut wood trim i absolutely love that and it's authentic wood it's not the fake wood you find in some other manufacturers it's authentic and it's kind of black so it ties in with the black interior that we have here today and it's found on the doors as well as just above the passenger side glove box and the climate control options here but dang it looks very high end that wood trim at least and it's walnut wood so that's definitely a plus ambient led lighting coming standard again tri-zone climate control there's a wireless phone charger that is available and that's going to be found just behind the shifter there and there are home link controls for up to three different garage doors so you don't have any of those rattling garage door openers on your sun visor it's always a plus that can be found on the ceiling here of the q5 for up to three different garage doors that's definitely nice there is a frameless rear view mirror i also love that and just in front of the the shifter there's another 12 volt power outlet usb charging port there is actually a sunglass holder i believe that's what its intended purpose is it fit my sunglasses is absolutely perfect but just to the right of the shifter there electromechanical parking brake of course but perhaps one of the quirky features that i usually don't find on other vehicles out there i don't think i've ever found actually or maybe i didn't pay attention i don't know that center armrest between the driver and passenger usually you can either lift it all the way up or you can lift it all the way down but this kind of has a power mechanism where you can set it to any particular height so if you wanted to rest your arm at like a 45 degree angle you can do that because you can set it to any particular height so i found that pretty cool i've actually never seen that in the 400 plus cars i've reviewed so far so kind of like that and that's just behind of course the wireless phone charger and if you press that wireless phone charger back you have dual cup holders so that's where they can be found but once actually opened up there's of course an auxiliary port and another usb charging port within that center armrest as well anyways let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display seven inch colored green is going to come with the premium 
8.3 inch screen is going to come with a premium plus and up and that is of course what you're looking at right now coming with that will be bluetooth and audio streaming as well as android auto and apple carplay meaning simply hook your smartphone up to the q5 and therefore you have free navigation through your smartphone displayed up on that tech display and you can also check out your pandora songs like and dislike your pandora songs up there as well and there's a couple other compatible apps up there too factory navigation system coming with the digital gauge cluster being the premium plus trim level and prestige of course you can also check out your radiant settings up there too and by the way when it comes to the sound system on the q5 10 speakers with 180 watts will come with the premium and premium plus trim levels but then if you were to go with the prestige you will find a 19 speaker bang and olfson sound system with 755 watts that's ridiculous and a 16 channel amplifier but and by the way i don't think i mentioned it yet to actually control what is on that digital display it is not touchscreen there is a circular dial and buttons and kind of a touchpad controller located just in front of the shifters so that is how you're going to control what is on there and yet at the same time not smudge up the screen with your fingers so <laughs> did want to mention that as well all right so we do actually have though the bang and olfson sound system as an option for our premium plus here today so what do you say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one definitely not bad there are actually speakers everywhere you got four of them located on the two a pillars combined there so but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the q5 in reverse you of course will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start, there are front side and side curtain airbags. Then in the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Did want to mention the premium plus trim level that we have today is going to add front and rear parking sensors as well as a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert. And that's going to be the little light indicators found within the side mirrors, letting you know what is in your blind spot so you don't go turning into anybody. That's always nice. Prestige trim level is going to add on top of that adaptive cruise control, a 360 degree camera, Audi park steering assist traffic sign recognition and lane keep assist as well hey so but that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold